Yo. What's up? Welcome to the stream. Now we are doing my first proper public slap bass lesson with my particular technique. Um, and so I have a preface. I have a little bit of story to talk about um, how I got here how I got here with this slap technique. Um, so when I first started playing, uh, I got a hold of a book. Let's see. Here it is. Um, it's called Funk Bass by John Liebman. And this is my original copy. I was 16 years old. You can see the <laughs> the giant font claiming the book. Maine. And so, uh, at the time, I was just playing four string. Um, and I slapped um, with my thumb pointing down. In other words, perpendicular to the string. You know, a lot of that kind of sound and then one of my friends came over to my house and um, I need to change my stream category came over to my house and did um, and played Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones and I was like what what the crap um, that first track, um, and then, and I heard that and I was like, how in the crap is this guy doing this? It was of course, Victor Wooten. Um, Victor Wooten is a dear friend of mine at this point in my life. I owe so much to him as far as my early bass childhood development. Um, just listening to him and trying to figure out what he was doing. And I couldn't figure it out. I, you know, I tried to get fast enough with my twitch muscles, with my wrist. Um, and I, I just couldn't I just couldn't get it together. And one, one day, I was playing with a pick. Uh, just messing around. I don't even remember what it was. This is almost 30 years ago. And I dropped my pick. And my thumb went in. Like that. Wait a second. Because I was playing with a pick. I could go down. I could go up. And I was like, what the heck? Is that it? So I started working on that trying to figure that out and then um victor wooten came out with a video i believe it was called super uh solo bass technique and he's got his rainbow puff pants on and you know stuff like that 
and he talks about it. Um, the way that he does it is a little bit different from me because I started working on that with my sort of picking wrist shape. Drop my pick, remember? And so when I hold a pick, you can see that my, my elbow kind of comes down. So it's not up here like it was. For that, I bring my elbow down and around a little bit. So it's like all kind of in that wrist. And I was trying to do that with the thumb. Okay, we'll get into the nitty gritty here in a sec. Um, so I, I started developing that. And then I saw his video come out and I, I could kind of like figure out how to get the plucks in there. And we'll talk about that in a second. But that's how I started uh, changing my technique from, you know, that kind of that kind of vibe to more of the. And I'm, I'm using less uh, force and more speed. So uh, the faster I can kind of move my move my wrist. Um, Um, I can kind of get that tone. Okay, so there's the story. That's how I've discovered Victor Wooten's technique. And then I saw a video of him, and then I kind of honed it from there. Um, he talks about a few different things that we'll get into, like hope and hammer pluck and hammer-ons and different things like that. So let's move to uh, camera two in a close-up, and let's talk about how I'm doing that. So this fingerboard is actually uh, a little longer. This is the 24th fret, so I have 26 frets. So there's 25 and 26. And usually I would slap in this space, just below the end of the fingerboard, right? But as you can see, um, I've, got, uh, I've got less room to slap. To get my thumb in there so when i when i do play i'm sort of hitting the end of the fingerboard you've probably seen bass players that have like a ramp between their pickups that's so that they don't that they have some kind of like tactile reference with their with their finger to touch you can kind of see that there so i'm doing a similar thing with my thumb i'm kind of touching the edge or maybe i'm playing in that particular space right there this base is so shiny, and you can see all my lights in the background. Um, anyway, so so I I tend to play at the end of the fingerboard. Okay, but if I kind of go at an angle here, you can see that um, when I'm playing, I'm hitting the string, and I'm stopping on the string below, just like if I were to kind of strum it, but not make the slap noise. So when I actually slap it, I'm doing that, but with enough force to cause the string to bash against the the metal of the fingerboard. So you're kind of getting that sound and this sound combined. Okay. So you want to start with your elbow kind of back and down to get this sort of angle. And it's almost like my thumb fits into that space. You can see where my thumb naturally wants to go at that 24th fret, that end, the edge of the, edge of the fingerboard. So I'm, I, I, when I play this five string, I have to purposefully kind of pull it back. Okay. So an exercise you can do is just hitting the E string, stopping on the A, hitting the A string, stopping on the D, and then when you hit the G string, I just kind of hit this pickup on this bass. You've probably seen the, the, the scar mark from Victor's thumb on his Fodera bass. That's because he hits the body. So if I'm here, I'm going to hit that body and, you know. But I actually have this pickup right here. So 
I kind of hit it, or maybe I go in between the pickup space and the fingerboard space. <laughs> And of course, I'm playing a five string right now, so I got a B, E, A, D, G, and you can see I'm smacking that pickup a little bit. So good exercise um, for that. Let me just kind of swap over here. Is I want to do um, open strings a lot, and really the right hand. Uh, at first is so important like the notes in your left hand don't really matter right now I'm just gonna hit open strings. I'll, I'll even mute them Because I'm trying to get that accuracy of hitting each string And I'm only doing single strokes right now, too So once I can uh, you know, kind of do this, and you want to start slow. You're gonna miss. You're gonna hit. You're gonna overpress, or you won't go through the string, or you know. Um, with time, you'll be able to do it. But go slow. Go slow. 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 Just really pay attention. I got a little wrist twist. Kind of drop into place. And my target is that that adjacent string, the one I stop on. That's really my target. And then over time, you can start speeding it up. And then mix and match the order uh, of strings that you hit. So if I were on just a four string, maybe I'll go E, D, E, D, A, G, yeah. Or vice versa, D. Uh, I can do one where I do like E and then the other combination. So E, A, D, G, E, A, G, D. And if I have four strings and I do those combinations, I have 24 different uh, permutations of that that I can do. So I'll start on the A string this time. You know, so on and so forth. Um, okay, once I can do pretty smooth single strokes uh, across all four strings, then I'm going to try to do a pluck with that. So, and when I pluck, let me sw let me swap cameras. When I pluck, I'm actually doing it's almost like it's almost like I'm doing a trigger pull. So just a little motion. Let me let me scooch this way. A little motion where I'm kind of doing that. like a little come here come here will ya and I can do it with my middle finger so I can do both come on over come on over so and you can see I just kind of sneak in there and just grab it so I'm not like pulling really hard. I'm not pulling away from the bass really violently. Um, again, from this angle. So I have all that single stuff, and then I can do the popping. So I'll do exercises where I do that sort of permutation, and I pop the G string every time. Or, or whatever, right? You can make up your own. But whatever exercise you decide to do, write, write those down and sort of keep a log of like how many reps you do. It's just like working out. It's how many reps of this, how many times you're going to do that, blah, blah, blah. Okay. 
So once you can play grooves with single stroke, but your thumb is going through, Um, you know, then I can start incorporating the upstroke. So what I want to do with the upstroke is, as I've got my thumb going through the string, all I have to do it, to keep going single, my thumb basically is in a static position. But to get the the up, I'm gonna get my get my thumb back up under the nail. So it's just a little bit of a gear shift in the thumb. So I'll, I'll do singles, super slow-mo, and now that little gear shift, you can see it. It's almost like my thumb kind of rolls, sort of kind of in place a little bit, but it's happening with my thumb knuckle, this, this knuckle here. So. And just like I did before, where I'm doing um, those exercises where I'm doing all the permutation of the of the open strings, I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm going to go down and up. Maybe do I, uh, however many strokes I want to do, four, two. see I can move it around whether I'm up here or in the middle or close to the fingerboard and I'm just muting my right hand like it doesn't even matter I just hold it like this so on and so forth so then after you've done that, I'm going to try to do a pluck. I'm going to add a pluck. So uh, if I do, it doesn't really matter. I can do octaves. So let me switch cameras again. I, I need a stream deck. Somebody out there want to buy me a stream deck? That'd be cool. And then with practice, of course, you can build up your speed. Him pluck plucking. Whatever. Okay. All right. So that's basically the technique overview. It takes a while. It takes a long while, actually, to really get accurate with. Um, hitting the strings with your right hand. But once I can do that, <clears throat> uh, once I can do that, then I'm able to uh, incorporate some stuff musically, okay? So let's go ahead and switch over to this other little thing. I have an exercise that I'm gonna teach you guys that you can do with, um, hopefully you can hear my bass. <laughs> Looks like you can. Okay. So what you see here is something that um, I kind of developed. And uh, it incorporates using the left hand percussively. Okay. So I'll just tell you what these markings mean. And then I'll switch and go back and show you what my left hand is doing. Um, so we'll get the left hand cam ready to roll. But each RL, RP, this is my left hand. I mean, sorry, my right hand. Left hand, 
right hand, left hand. This could be my thumb. This could be the palm. It doesn't really matter what it is as long as it's some kind of event, musical event. And notice I can do either a, mu a muted note. Oh, my God. Okay, let's not do that. Either a muted note or this. Um, that is a ghost note. Okay, come on, Adobe. All right, there we go. Okay, that's lovely. Uh, <laughs> and then the P can be plucked either pitched or not. Not pitched. Okay. And then, of course, pitched. This is this one. Highlight. That's your pitched note. Okay. So, what I have going on with my left hand. Uh, oh, yeah, left hand cam. Wah. Hello. Uh, all right, so left-hand cam is going to be either uh, hammer-ons, so if I'm doing pitch. So if it's a left-hand pitch. And you can see my right hand's not doing anything. Now it is. Um, you'll see that when I'm left hand hammer oning, um, I'm trying to keep some stuff quiet with my ring finger, and I'm using either one and four, one and two, or two and four, or one, two, four. Because there's always one of the fingers trying to mute. They make little things you can put up here. Victor Wooten used um, hair scrunchies for a long time. Groove Gear makes some. I actually have a couple. I don't use them very often, but I have them. Um, okay, so that's pitched. Non-pitched notes, percussive notes. I have two versions, two ways to do it. I either mute with my first finger and smack with these three. Or I mute with these three and smack with this one. And if I combine the two halves of, not really halves, but th those two groups, so this group, this group, and this, then I can make something like consistent, con consistent rhythm. Okay. So that's all that my left hand ever really does. One combination of one of those three things, either a pitch, a mute with the the lower three fingers or the mute with the first finger. Okay. So now when I'm doing that figure, <clears throat> let's actually go back to that figure. Um, okay, so what I'm doing with that figure is right hand hits the E string. Left hand hits the strings. Okay, I'm gonna move, move this out of the way so you can kind of see me what I'm doing. Like that. Okay, so I do that twice in a row. Left, right, or right, left, right, left. And then I pluck uh, the G string. Okay. So you can just try that. Right, left, right, left, pluck. Right, left, right, left, pluck. And just practice that move. That move. Okay, once you can do that, we're going to add the next three sixteenth notes, which is an open A. C sharp pluck, or hammer on, sorry. Open G plug. And that's the sound we're getting. So right, left, right, left, pluck, right, left, pluck. But now they're all those three are pitched. 
next 16th notes it's going to be right left right so you'll notice the pattern is right left right left pluck right left pluck that gives me uh eight total events with that motion which gives me that accent on top with the pluck right left right left pluck right left pluck okay that's the first one next one uh that l is smooshed but that's this this right here that's that's a left that's your left hand doing that so we'll just highlight that that's left hand so pluck right left pluck pluck right left pluck pluck right left pluck okay so all of that all of that put together So practice that really slow, um, and you can take a screenshot of this if you like. You have my permission to do it. If you actually want the file, um, DM me on Instagram or um, something like that, and I will send it to you. Or you can you can put a comment down below. I'll link a I'll lo leave a link in the description on YouTube if you want to do that. it kind of fast the cool thing is once you get used to that right left right pluck right left pluck right left, right left, right left, right left, right left i can even say it as fast as i can play it do little 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 it's pretty cool you can do a lot of really neat stuff with it um, you can play it all percussive. I can play it all pitched. All the, you know, I'm playing a note with every event. And I can vary it or whatever. I can add double thumbing. There's a lot you can do with that motion. Right, left, right, left, pluck, right, left, pluck. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't say that it comes from Victor Wooten's uh, technique of open hammer pluck. So you can look up open hammer pluck, uh, and Victor Wooten will be demonstrating um, that very thing. Open note, hammer on a note, pluck a note. Because it's three events, it sounds like triplets. And you've probably heard his thing where you... Or something along those lines. That's that thing. Open hammer plug. Open hammer plug. Open hammer plug. Open hammer plug. Right. And you can look that up um, through Victor's materials. Um, it's easy to find. I just added an extra left right. In other words, an extra open hammer. Open hammer. Open hammer plug. Open hammer plug. Open hammer. Open hammer plug. Open hammer plug. And that gave me that even number. Whatever. Um, so open hammer pluck, of course, is my 
tripletized version or three events. And then, of course, adding that extra. Whatever kind of a thing. Okay. So that's it. That's all I'm doing when I'm when I'm doing fancy slapping the bass stuff. Um, it just takes a lot of time to get accurate with the physical motion. That's that's the biggest takeaway is um accuracy with the physical motion. What you do, how you create doesn't really matter. You can do whatever you like. Um, I would say start the technique with some grooves that you already can play. If you're slapping sort of this way, or if you kind of already do this way, play some stuff that you already know. Um, you know, I did a lot of like disco lines. <laughs> Trying to figure out how to do it. Whatever it might be, um, just getting that sort of familiar familiarity, carrying it over uh, into the new technique. So there you go. Um, if you have any questions, please um, either shoot me a DM on Instagram, or if you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching on YouTube. Uh, put a question in the comment, and I will answer your questions. I'm always available to interact. Uh, you know. I've got just like everybody else. I've got a. I've got my. Everything is right here, so I will see it. If you ask a question, I would happily answer it. Um, be sure to follow, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. I really appreciate you um, being here and hanging out. Uh, I'm going to be creating a lot more content, so thanks so much for hanging, and we'll uh, see you next time. <laughs>